jump in, ask a question, and uh, you know we'll do our best to answer it. Uh, I've also got, I, I don't know if, if you all saw this, but 10% off a, uh, a flight with us, should you choose to uh, come on up. If not, just take one of these cards. They'll have a different picture on them, which is pretty cool. So, uh, first off, we'd like to thank Adorama for having us here. They've been a great partner. Um, you know, the tagline, it's more than just a camera store. They've, they've done a video with us. If you've seen that online, it's pretty cool. Um, stuff like this where, where we get to get out and meet people and see some of the fans that we have and answer some of the questions and get more and more people involved. You know, that's what we're all about. So, you know, we love that. So we'd like to thank them for that. Um, so with that, let me, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to jump right into a PowerPoint here and, you know, I'll start. Um, See if it works the right way if I do this. Perfect. So, so New York and Air. We we started like Tim said, you know, three years ago. Uh, if everybody remembers Hurricane Sandy, um, we had a nasty storm in New York and it wrecked a lot of both Long Island, the city, areas of Staten Island, Queens, Brooklyn. Uh, caused a lot of damage. The Jersey Shore was certainly not spared, you know, in any way. Um, we both live in New Jersey, and you know it was this thing initially where let's get up, let's take some pictures of the damage, let's see what happened. Um, they weren't really letting people into any of the damaged areas, so it was kind of like this experience where you know we were both awed and you know upset and psyched to take pictures all at the same time. You know, and I think that there's a lot of like journalistic type photography that feels that way. But you know, for me, I had never really been in a helicopter other than once or twice. And it was an opportunity to go up and take some pictures in a way that, that I had never experienced before. So it was exciting to be up and have a direct connection with the beach and the houses that were destroyed and all that. You know. And then pretty quickly what happened was we started having thoughts like you know, taking those pictures was, um, was different, but you know, we've got this amazing city right in front of us. Um, you know, we were based in Kearney, New Jersey initially, and still are. But the, you know, the point is the helicopters in Kearney, New Jersey. So it's a two and a half minute flight from the Statue of Liberty. Very quickly, we were thinking, let's go take pictures of New York City. Right? And you know what happened there was um, Tim and a couple people that he knows through the aviation business, and Tim will tell you a little bit about his background in a second. Got together, um, decided to, to you know make it a business, start taking pictures, start building a social media presence. I mean, I don't think we were using words like that at the time, but. You know, the idea was like, let's get some pictures, let's put them on the web, let's sell some prints, let's put them on Instagram and see who, see who likes it, you know? Um, we good? Cool. So, um, why don't you talk a minute about the background of how you and, and Pat and Jim sure. and everybody got together. Well, I started flying about 1995 uh, and wasn't into photography at the time, but I was into plenty of movie watching and, and enjoying the cinematography aspect of it, so I kind of knew the direction I wanted to go. Uh, but that's way early on. But as Paul said, Sandy came around and uh, our our CEO, Pat, and I uh, decided that we'd like to try. And we found that the stock industry, as far as New York is concerned, maybe was a little dated. The uh, buildings, you know, still some of the, they were still showing signs of the World Trade Center. Uh, so we thought we were both very into the photography aspect of it and wanted to repopulate in a grandiose way the uh, that part of it. And having access to aircraft and uh, and photographers was our uh, was our stepping stone into that. And it really just evolved into taking taking cool pictures and getting a very positive feedback from uh, on on Facebook. Really, that was our start, uh, and Instagram slowly followed after that. Uh, and I mean, I remember when 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 you guys started. I wasn't part of it yet. Um, you know, I had gone up with Hurricane Sandy and Tim. So let's go up again. And I've got this thing going with these guys, and you know, something's coming of it. I remember looking on Facebook one day, and they had like couple thousand followers and then I looked like a week later and it was like 40,000 people were yeah. on top of it. I mean it was probably wasn't a week but it, it, it felt like that so I, I think the response was was immediate. Um, you know the drone industry is kind of picking up right there's there's people taking pictures above the ground now from 
you know, a few different, you know, there's, there's different ways of doing it. And, and one way of doing it is this helicopter. Um, you know, we call it Mike Hotel, but, um, you know, the helicopter's a twin star. It's got two engines, it's got two hydraulic systems, two hydraulic systems. It's got it's a dual hydraulic. Dual hydraulic. Right. So See, t Tim's fail safe. the pilot. Fail safe. Um, you know, the important thing is, you know, when you're flying over some places populated as New York, that, um, that there's a lot of safety involved. And, you know, we, we like to say we're as much a safety company as we are an adventure company. So, you know, I want to point that out at, at, at each step. Because what you're going to see are images of people sitting in a helicopter with no doors, a harness, all that kind of thing. It's, you know, it's really very safe. Once you get used to the concept of it, it's, it's uh, while it's still exciting, it's not as scary as it uh, might look. So that's one view of the helicopter. That's another one. Um, I don't know, why don't you tell us a little more about the helicopter itself? Well, the, the helicopters are bigger than your kind of your standard helicopter. Uh, this one that we operate is called, a, like Paul said, a twin star. It's twin engine. Uh, it's got, so therefore it has two engines and seats, you can comfortably seat four, but it's got seat for six. So when we take our folks up for, for our, uh, our photo flights, we usually have maximum of four passengers. That way it gives uh, everyone access to the, uh, to the doors and the windows. Uh, the fact that we operate at Twin Star is, uh, over the city, is, like Paul said, a uh, more of a safety feature. We much prefer to have a uh, multi-engine flying over Manhattan. Uh, God forbid something happens, uh, we have redundancy in that, in that regard. And as a pilot, I, prefer, I totally prefer to have a little redundancy. Uh, so I feel much more, uh, much more comfortable doing that. Um, they're fast. Uh, they're very stable. It's a very stable platform. You see a lot of these these type of aircraft are uh, used in uh, electronic news gathering and, uh, and in the, and in the uh, film industry. Before I knew Tim was going to be here today, I looked up, I, I, you know, I like looking, you know, at Wikipedia, the helicopter, look at some things, and one of the things that came up was gross maximum takeoff weight of like 5,000 something pounds. So um, this was a, a shot of two guys that came up with us a few months back. They're both off, they both weigh 325 pounds, and I flew with them, so. Um, They're New York giant linemen. They are New York giant linemen. Um, the point is that it's, you know, like Tim said, it's a very stable platform, so um, that's the helicopter. Um, moving on, you guys saw some video. Um, you know, this is the camera system that that we use to, to shoot video. It's mounted under the helicopter. I didn't have a good picture of, of it mounted under the front of the helicopter, but it mounts to a, a, an arm that sticks outside of it. It mounts to the landing gear of the helicopter, and it sits outside, and the operator sits on the inside and drives the camera. Um, it's it's a very sophisticated six-axis gyro-stabilized camera. It's called a shot over F1. Uh, and we actually have two cameras that we use in it. One's a red Epic Dragon, uh, and we should mount that with a 30 to 300 Canon lens. And the other one is a... Uh, Aria Alexa XTM, the single fiber optic line with uh, the Ajinu 25 to 250 lens. Uh, and we're in the, thinking of trading in one of those lenses to get a 16 by 90 wide angle lens to really get us some really cool content. We'll get into some of the, I the ideas behind various lenses and things with the stills in a minute, but um, touching back on that first photo, you can see the, the basic harness set up uh, and the basic helicopter set up on that, on that what do you call that thing again? I call it a, a tub, but I'm always wrong. That's the thing that pulls it. It's called the dolly. The dolly. Yeah. Is the uh, the, <laughs> the thing that the helicopter sits on and moves around on. But the you know those utility harnesses are um, you know they're very safe. They're very sturdy. They're very comforting when you're up in the helicopter and the doors open. Um, and you know like I mentioned, these guys are both huge, so um, it held them. It's going to hold us. We have no concerns there. It's just precautionary because you're wearing a seatbelt anyway. Yeah. So you're wearing a seatbelt and that, uh, it just gives everyone a sense of a much more needed security. What it allows us to do though is, is fly with the door open without having to think about it much. And it, it gives you a much more you know connected view um, you know, to the ground. Um, you know, photographically, you feel much more connected with, with everything you're taking pictures. Of, um, this is a view from inside the helicopter shortly after a takeoff, and, and this is a view from 
from another helicopter looking at a couple people taking pictures from the helicopter. So um, the guy in the front there is Vin Farrell. He's one of, uh, he's on our board of directors. He's one of the contributing photographers. Some of the pictures in here might be his. Uh, and the guy in the back with the shaka is Jimmy Chin. I don't know how many of you know Jimmy, but uh, he's a pretty renowned adventure photographer. He shoots for National Geographic. And uh, I think that was a piece for uh, North Face that they were doing for some commercials that are running now. So it's exciting stuff. We were, we were happy to have a guy like that up and, you know, uh, moving on. That's it's another shot of the helicopter. Uh, and I'm just going to give you a couple views from inside here. Um, you know, basically that's what you're looking at, you know, shooting at the World Trade Center. Uh, a different view from downtown shooting out. So, you know, that's kind of the look that you get, that's the experience you get. Whether, you know, whether we're flying for, um, you know, and this gets us into a little bit about what, what we actually do on a daily basis. There's some production work, you know, sometimes um, they might be with the video camera out shooting a commercial, uh, it could be for a movie, uh, there's some movie credits if you look on our website. It could be uh, real estate work for a building in the city here. Um, in this case, um, that was actually shoot for the people that uh, manage the World Trade Center. They wanted some dawn shots for, uh, for, for, I think, for a print for their lobby or, uh, you know, some commercial collateral. Um, this was a fly nylon shoot. I'll get into into that in a second. Um, you know, basically, again, at the beginning of the company was kind of throw some stuff at the wall. We go up, we take some pictures. We know we want to take great pictures in New York, and then what do we do with it? You know, we try to sell some prints. That's fine. We put some stuff on Instagram. It grows quickly. Put some stuff on Facebook. It grows quickly. Little by little, um, we started getting phone calls. First, they were phone calls from people that knew Tim and some of his um, some of his colleagues that, that fly from the commercial um, flight part of the business. And you know, there were calls like, "Can you take pictures of our building? Can you come film the commercial? Can can you do some of that kind of you know production work for us?" Um, ultimately, though, as the as the social media aspect of the business. You know, built up, and I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Lexi to come up here in a second, um, and we can talk about that. You know, what happened was really the social media thing just grabbed it, and it kind of took off. Most of the people that we've found that are our photographers, that are you know our employees, that are partners, that are you know the people involved in the business on a day to day business, almost all of our fans and customers are all people from only a couple social media platforms. So it was really interesting how social media kind of took off with it. And, and then created another business out of that. People started calling and saying, how can I get up and fly? How can I go take pictures like, like the pros? How can I go take pictures? I, you know, they, they see this guy sitting in a helicopter and they see it and they want to get, it, get in there and do it themselves. And, and it was kind of cost prohibitive. You know? I mean, these aren't cheap machines. They, they cost a lot of money to operate, to insure, to staff, to, to maintain, to fly, and to fuel. So you know, it, it's, it's an expensive proposition by by leveraging social media and crowdsourcing the flight and building a booking engine and, pull, engine and pulling all this together, we were able to get, you know, anybody really, or almost anybody, can come out and, and fly with us and, you know, it made it a lot less expensive to do. So basically what we'll do is we'll take two or three or four people um, and, and kind of squash groups together and, you know, when we have three or four people, we'll fly, you know, and we'll go up on a flight like this and, you know, and, you know, you just you see what, what can happen. Um, Lexi, why don't you come up for, for a minute or two. Um, Lexi was somebody that came to us through social media. There, were, there was a contest that we held. He'll tell you a little bit about it. Lexi won. And um, now he works, he works for the company full time, but before he was a photographer. Um, um, yeah, so my story was kind of weird. Um, a lot of people think that I got involved with Adorama because I'm such a big time influencer on Instagram, but that's not really the case. Um, I started out by following these guys loyally on Instagram, and one day they had a contest to, as they were flying around New York City, to write the name New York on air in the snow, and they'll pick their favorite. Um, a friend of mine, Natalie, kind of commented to draw my attention to the feed, and it was seven hours after the post was up, I had no clue if I was going to get a chance or not. I commented, are you flying over Staten Island, which is where I live, um, and I got an instant reply back, we'll be there in 10 minutes. So I run out of the house with a snow shovel to the nearest tennis court, finish writing NY on air in the size of an entire tennis court and half a basketball court. It was massive. 
And as soon as I finish it, I hear a helicopter approaching, and it happened to be our CEO flying the helicopter waving at me, and that was like the most awesome day of my life. Um, later that night, my phone started blowing up because of Instagram notifications, and they apparently saw this sign from five miles away. And from that, I got my first flight with New York on Air. Um, in that first flight, it was kind of unreal because my previous experience with the helicopter was just a simple tour around New York City. And in this, we were doing some incredible maneuvers, getting really close to the Statue of Liberty above New York City. We were actually doing an air-to-air -air shoot where we had two helicopters up at the same time. And one of my shots was actually a really telephoto shot of the back of the Statue of Liberty's head. Because I'm like, nobody really sees this. And once we shared that on social media, um, it kind of did something different on our Instagram feed. We kind of hit a spike. And from that, I kind of got involved with the brand because I was shooting something different. Um, so I joined the ranks of the many photographers we have on New York On Air. And our social media following kept growing and growing and growing. Um, we're slowly approaching half a million followers on Instagram now. And um, a few months ago, I joined the operations side of Fly Nine, which is actually the experience part of our company. So everybody sees this incredible photography, and they want to do it for themselves. And what we've done through the power of social media and all this demand, we are now crowdsourcing flights. So instead of renting out an entire helicopter for half an hour, which would cost you $2,000, you now buy one seat on it for $4.99. It's a lot more accessible. And now we've got flights at $1.95, we just want to try the experience. And that's been proving even more popular because now anybody can go up. Our most popular camera that goes up is actually an iPhone. So we want to give the best access to the skies. We're in New York City now, we're in Miami. Uh, we're in the process of launching in San Francisco and LA, um, world domination after that. And it's pretty much incredible to capture these iconic places um, from your own point of view. Um, I know a lot of people say, well, drones are so popular, you can just get a drone and do it. Well, not really in New York City because of legalities of flying drones, plus there's something kind of amazing of actually seeing it and experiencing it. Um, our tagline is New York on Air, Fly Nine is the ultimate photo experience. And it really is an experience when you come in, you get strapped in, you connect your cameras, whether it's an iPhone or a medium format camera, and you fly above New York City with your feet dangling out of the helicopter. It's amazing. I mean, like, the number one thing people ask about are shoe selfies now. You can't do a shoe selfie with a drone, um, unless you kind of like attach a sneaker, which is kind of weird. We'll figure it out. Um, maybe one day. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of incredible how social media has provided a platform where you can now make aerial photography accessible every day. And that's what we do. Um, we have very busy weekends, we fly weekdays, um, and it's incredible. Lexi, you know, as, a, as an influencer on Instagram and social media in general, you feel, you know, I mean, obviously one of the goals of bringing people like yourself up for New York on Air was to help us continue to gain relevancy in the photography community. Do you felt like it did the opposite as well? Well, I mean, it kind of, like, it helps you grow as a something because now aerial photography um, is something that people recognize. Three years ago when we were first starting out, it was completely new. But now, it, it's not new, but it's still as exciting. So people are super excited when they see aerial content. It's probably like, I shoot different styles on my feed, everything from abstract to product photography, and aerial always takes the cake. Everybody wants to see the city from a fresh perspective. Um, and people constantly want to work with us, whether it's brands, photographers, or just everyday people. Um, so it's kind of putting the content out there generates even more desire for more content. And the city is constantly changing. When I was shooting a couple years back, I mean, there's skyscrapers that are up now that didn't exist. So the kind of the landscape of New York City keeps changing, and it'll keep changing. Um, so with social media, we can kind of keep kind of fresh content non-stop. And now we're starting to share our customers' content because some talented photographers are coming up and they want to share their skill sets. So it's not just the core team. It's anybody that flies with us can share their work. Um, and that's pretty exciting. Thanks. Well, thank you very much. So, you know, for lack of having a better um, thought on how to present some of the photography, what, what I thought was, you know, at first I was thinking like, you know, the normal route that we take when we fly, but there really is none. It depends on, on what we're doing. So uh, what, what I decided to do is kind of organize these photographs, in, not in chrono chronological order of when we took them, but sort of seasonally. So, I, you know, I started uh, back with this shot. Tim actually took the shot. 
Um, you know, I think that's a fall shot. It looks fally to me. It might be one more winter, but I tried to organize them kind of winter, spring, summer, and then back at the end into um, what, you know what we're shooting right now, which is autumn, and then a couple of specialized things that we do. So, um, you know, I'll kind of flip through them. Um, anybody have any questions so far? Okay. I want you to think about these in terms of um, four things. One, the equipment that, that might have been used to shoot them. Um, two, you know, one of the things that's a little tricky, one of the questions we get all the time is what are the settings? Right? So camera settings in terms of, you know, shutter speed and ISO and aperture and, you know, all that kind of thing. We can get into that a little bit. Um, what other equipment we might use to get some of those settings. Um, what techniques, burst mode, etc., cetera, that, that might be used along the way. And then some of the, you know, some of the unusual conditions that you're going to see here that we you know, that we take, like this is a little bit of a hazy day, this is obviously dawn, this is more evening. So, um, you know, keep, keep those four things in mind as, as we go through them. Um, you know, the next two shots here, this, this and, and, and this are both World Trade Center shots. Um, this was one of the first shoots I was, was ever on, it was a dawn shoot. Taylor Mason shot that. Um, it's a sunset shot. It's a sunset shot. That's not a dawn shot, it's a sunset shot. The one before that was a dawn shot. That's the dawn, so I have it backwards. You are, yes. Okay. So I was on this shoot, not the other shoot. I was on both of those too. Well, you were flying the helicopter, yeah. so. That's a dawn shot. You can see from the perspective that you're looking to the east and the sun is reflecting off the back side of the patch of the building. And then on the next shot, you can switch to that, the reflection is from behind. You can see that? I can see that. From the, okay. I can see that too, very good. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure that was a winter shot. I'm not sure about about that one. That, when did you shoot that? That one. Uh, I think that was probably a late fall winter shot. That's a pretty long lens, right? It's 300 millimeter prime. That's why you can bring in. This is before. If you look way in the back, you can see the uh, what is the space shuttle on the Intrepid back there, and now it's covered with a uh, like by some tent. sort of shelter. Tent. Shelter. Tent of shelter. Tarp. But yeah. They threw a tarp over it. They did. Maybe. Too bad. Uh, yeah. Can't shoot it from the air anymore. Um, so World Trade Center. Uh, this is a shot I took. This it was Columbus Circle. Obviously, you can see some. I mean, did you get the cursor yet? Um, you can see some Christmas lights at the Time Warner Center there. Um, it's a shot I like. A lot of these are going to be mine when I put the presentation together. I like me, so you know, Tim knows it. It's all good. Um, but good shots. But Columbus Circles, you know, I, I don't want to say it's a constant landmark. When we when we go up, you know, the first time people go up, there's always some things they want to see. They always want to see Statue of Liberty. Not always, but, you know, as, as a general rule, they want to see the Statue of Liberty. They want to see downtown financial district. They want to see the bridges in the East River. They want to see Central Park. They want to see Columbus Circle. They want to see Times Square. So Empire State Building. And the Empire State Building. More Empire than State anything. Building. More than anything, you think? For sure. Yes, big? Yes, big. ESP. Um, we definitely have some ESP shots in here. So uh, this shot's from 110th Street, looking down after after one of the snowstorms last year. Um, again, you know, we refer to that shot and sort of this one uh, as one of our money shots. You know, when when people go on our website and they look around in our gallery and and they're looking for content, whether it's whether it's a print they want to buy or a stock photograph that they that they want to license. Um, or whether they're prepping for you know their own flight and they're looking at what they might want to go shoot, this view and and this view and uh, and this one are the three that really come into into play the most. Um, everybody wants to get they over. Get the most part. likes on on social media. That's how we know that they're most popular. It's a good way of looking at it. Too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is really the shot, right? I mean. Not mine, but the you know this view is is the money shot. We've we've taken this shot. Um, we've got uh, Jillian took one that we love. Um, we've got three or four other photographers. Everybody that's gone up has shot this photograph. So um, you know it's a matter of getting the right light. It's a matter of getting you know in this shot. What's unusual is there, there's snow on top of some of the buildings and in the park. Um, but the statue, you know, the statue, the uh, the ferries, the light off the building, the you know. The, the compression of everything in the financial district. Everybody likes this. It's sort of iconic New York. Um, 
So, you know, there's there's the Empire State Building talking of iconic New York. Uh, I'm not even sure who shot that, but um, it was one of the shots that we've used before on social media. You know, it's in our gallery. You know, we, we, we love the sunsets and sunrises. You know, when you talk about the conditions, you know, of the four things to look at, right? Um, if, if you want to go up and take pictures, and, and if you want to shoot outdoors in general, I mean, you know, it's not a bad idea to start with the hour after sunrise or the hour before sunset. So, um, you know, you get some great shots like these, you know, at that time. Um, one of the things that's unique about aerial photography is you get the, you know, I call it the look down, right? There's, you know, there's a few of those in here. You get these straight down shots. This was shot with a really wide lens. It was a 14, 24. Uh, I think that's Third Avenue that's at the base of the photograph. You know, just looking west, and you can see the, uh, you know, Rockefeller. No, it can't be Third Avenue. That's Fifth Avenue. Yeah, because uh, you've got right over here, Rockefeller Center and the skating rink and and all that. So you can even see Central Park up here. Pretty cool. You fit that much in one shot from I don't know, 1,500 feet. Yeah, so um, again, lighting conditions. You get in, you know, you get you get a sunset. Uh, just a different view of the financial center and in the World Trade. You know, cloudy days. You know, a lot of people are always kind of trying to trade in cloudy days for sunny days. And you know, while it's nice to go up in a helicopter or go outside and take pictures on a beautiful sunny day, um, beautiful sunny day. One o'clock is rarely when you're going to get the most dramatic picture of anything. So um, sometimes it pays to take a gamble. I think this was after a storm, and you know there was some moody cloudiness, and you know you only you only get those really warm sunsets after you get you know some clouds in a storm and get a little lucky and something opens up. Um, this is another look down. Um, Jillian, do you know who shot this picture? What's that? Dan Silva. Dan Silva shot this photograph. Uh, he's one of our more uh, popular photographers. Uh, I think he's he's probably our most you know most watched Instagram follower. You know, certainly sells sells the most prints of things that we do. You know, historically anyway. Um, personally, I like the look down more than anything. Um, I shot this one. When when you shoot a look down, you know you're looking for one of two things really. Um, you're either looking for geometry, you know, so you get some cool geometry, you know, in these, right? Everything in New York is great because it's, you know, it's lined up via some kind of grid. Here you get some funny angles. Um, this one I played around with in Photoshop afterwards because we weren't actually directly over the center of that fountain, so the corners of the park didn't quite line up, so I had to bend it, if you will, to make it look right to me. Some people do that, some people don't. I don't know. Um, but when you're looking straight down, you, you want either geometry or you want some kind of activity. Here you've got a little bit of both. You've got some people in the park messing around. It was a nice spring day. It was warm out. Uh, it was a weekday. You had people outside. You know, that's Bryant Park. Um, you know, there's a lot going on there. And, you know, when, when you zoom into some of these pictures, you know, you, you find some interesting things. But even, even just looking at it from this distance, personally, I like the geometry. Um, this photograph was taken by Jillian. It was a kind of a moody, you know, not quite sunsetty, you know, early afternoon photograph of uh, of the World Financial Center. I don't know, you know, to me, what what struck me was there's a lot of cool shadows in that picture and the moodiness of the clouds. And then, you know, honestly, you don't see a lot of parks when you look at Manhattan from a distance. You know, this this picture, I don't know. I mean, a third of it is that park, you know, Battery Park there. So. Um, we just found it interesting, and, and again, that cloud cover brings a lot to the, the picture. Um, similar idea here, not, not so much with the parks, but you know, with the moodiness and the clouds. Um, you know, a little bit of kind of I, I call it Gotham esque. I'm not sure what else to call it, but it's sort of a it's just moody. I don't know. Um, Brooklyn Bridge. Right? Same idea. As you know, as we go around. You know, around the city. I mean, what do you, what do you think people are typically looking for? I mean, you know, these pictures are all kind of classic views that we see, you know, all the time, and and we tend to get a little jaded after a while. You start going around and thinking about it and like trying to look for different stuff to take pictures of. But 
you know, every, everybody wants pictures of a lot of the same things, and it's, you know, when you can line something up like this, you get a cool shot. Um, if you get something moody like that, I don't know, what do you think? Well, early on, uh, before this, we started the company, you, get, you fly around, and, you know, I see it every day, and I think it's fantastic every day. Everything, some, every day is different. You see a different angle and this and that, uh, and you could take it for granted, but you don't. And the impetus to the company was being able to share this view with uh, with the rest of the world, and, there's, and that's kind of how we got started. So to answer your question, uh, you, you can fly around and find something new every day. You can look at the bridge from a hundred different angles, and you get something different. The light will change. The clouds will be different. You could shoot in black and white. You could do. It, there's thousands of ways to, to take the same image and make it special for um, what you like to do. Some guys like to shoot super dark, black and white, nice, saturated in color. Yeah. We were flying around maybe a month ago, and we were, we were somewhere downtownish, and um, I kind of looked. We were concentrating on one thing, but I kind of looked over and I saw this roof, and there's a plane on the roof of the building. I don't know, has anyone seen it? Do you know what I mean, Lux? There's a, there's a biplane on the roof of a building in New York. I'd never seen it before. I'd never seen yeah, a picture of it. In the Wall Street area. Yeah, I, yeah. I was like, is, is that a plane? You know, I mean, it, it's just up there in a building. It's it's hard mounted down. It's not going anywhere. It's not supposed to take off. It's just a piece of art or whatever. I don't know how they got it up there. I don't know if they took it apart and put it back together. But nevertheless, you know, Tim's right. You see a lot of different things. Um, you know, when you look at, at something like this picture, um, I, I guess it's worth trying to, you know, keep on point here. Uh, equipment, right? So I shoot with uh, Nikon equipment primarily. I shoot a Nikon D800, sometimes a D810. Um, I would say 70% of the pictures that you're going to see on here. If, how many people shoot with DSLRs? Okay. How many people shoot with iPhones only? Any of that? Not so much today. All right. Um, we do get some people that are exclusively iPhone. I would say, I mean, and I'm speaking on my own behalf, but 70% of everything I shoot, I shoot with a, a 24-70. So, you know, that intermediate zoom gives me the room to kind of go, you know, wide, like, if that's a 24-70, um, that's a 24-70, that's a 24-70. Um, almost everything else, like this included, is a 70-200. So I use the 7200 2.8 that Nikon makes. I like it a lot. Uh, I'm kind of alone in, in that. You know, most of the people that we have shoot Canon. Um, there's a, a variance of camera bodies and lenses and all that kind of stuff. But um, I, you know, I would say it's 90/10 Canon Nikon, right? 80/20 no 90/10, right? Yeah. Mm. What are you gonna do? Um, that world's changing a lot, though. There's, you know, there's a lot of um, mirrorless stuff coming out. Um, the guys here at Adorama can help you with, you know, with what's what. I saw, um, I saw a Blackmagic Cinema cam the camera on the counter over there. I've never actually seen one in per person before, so um, that's pretty cool. There, you know, there's just a lot changing with equipment. And as the iPhones get better and better, you know, the six was a big jump. Um, before it was even released, we had a guy that came. It was working for Apple. What's his name? Ben Lowe. Ben Lowe came out. He's a photographer. He traveled the world on, I, I believe, on Apple's dime and took a bunch of pictures for them. And, you know, I always thought those those uh, shot with an iPhone 6 kind of ads that you see were, you know, stuff that, like, I shot and sent in. You know, it, they're, they're organized campaigns with guys that are really talented and, and, and good equipment. But the equipment is... is is just an iPhone now, and, and that's what's kind of going on. So, I think it's pretty cool. Um, like what I said, what are you shooting with? I mean, you're shooting with Nikon and D800, but to get these shots, are you what kind of speed? Can you talk about the settings that you're using? You know, because sure. it's, it, I can tell you, what, going up, and you think, yeah, I can get that. And the first few times, I was like, I didn't get any of that. It's awful because it, it's yeah. a lot of movement. Um, you got to remember, you know, think about shooting out of your car window, driving down a highway, and you're moving in one direction on one axis. So, you know, in, in a helicopter, you might not necessarily be going, you might be going 100 miles an hour, or you might just be going, you know, 20 miles an hour, you might even be hovering, but um, 
everything's moving in three different directions. So the helicopter is moving forward and back, left and right, it's turning. You've got different altitudes. Um, you've got to be willing to, sometimes, if, if, if it's moving enough, you've got to be willing to back the zoom up and take a shot of something knowing that you're going to have to crop it and straighten it out later. Um, I, I would say the, the single biggest Lightroom feature that I use on almost every single shot that I ever take, I've got to level it a little bit. You know, I use the, the grid in the camera viewfinder so I can try to line up the horizon. Sometimes, um, you know, you know, like here I've got a horizon and that's great. Um, but here, I, you, you know, here you don't. So you kind of just look down the middle of the bridge. You shoot in burst mode. Um, it gets a little hairy with, with some of the, the newer, more advanced cameras. You know, if, if you're shooting a D4S or the, the Canon's even faster, I mean, 13 frames a second, something like that. I mean, it sounds like a machine gun going off. So um, really quickly, you can find that you took a thousand pictures on a, you know, on, on a shoot. Shoot in burst mode? I do, but I keep it relatively slow. You know, like three frames, a, I set it for like three frames a second. Okay. Um, you know, so, so something like this, I mean, I remember taking this picture, we were going kind of northbound past the bridge, and, and I was looking out of the helicopter, and I said, you know, what I want is this shot. I want it to line up right down the middle of the bridge. You know, but if, if you wait till you're right down the middle of the bridge, it's, it's weird. Like, you know, what you see out of, you know, over your shoulder and what you see through the viewfinder, sometimes are two different things. So I, I find personally I'm always a little late if I wait to do it that way. So I wait until I'm almost there and then I kind of just light it up and you know and, and maybe from you know being over one road roadway to the opposite roadway, you know, I might take two or three pictures and look sometimes you get it perfectly you know lined up, sometimes you don't. Um, there's a shot where, you know, I showed you that that, that view before down from Central Park South. Um, I've been trying to perfectly line up the needle on the Empire State Building and the needle on the World Trade Center for like a year now. And, and it's dumb, but it, now it's like, you know, I want to own that. You know, it just hasn't happened, but um, I've gotten pretty close. You can see, I still see the needle just a little bit left to right. But the point is, you know, when, when you want to get a particular view, you got to visualize it a little bit more ahead of time from a helicopter than, you know, than you might standing on the roof of a building for sure. And you know, I mean, I don't know where else you're getting that view, but if you think of something on the ground, it's like trying to shoot something that's moving. You kind of got to um, think like a quarterback and, you know, throw to the receiver, if you will. Um, that's assuming the shot is in focus, right? If you shoot in burst mode, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, and it's not really in focus, all those bursts are going to be out of focus, right? That would be horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. That happened Did that happen to you? Yeah, quite a bit. So now I don't shoot in burst mode. Me too. I just... Recompose every shot, but you can be quick at it. And the cameras are fast enough now that you can you can shoot, you can recompose every shot rather quickly. Or you can set the camera not to refocus on every shot. Yeah, but you know. So what I mean, you, you, you got to be There's a lot of different setting. ways. One one recommendation, and I've seen it a few times now. People have come up. Um, you know, I, I did it myself. I had um, before I had the D800. I had a I think a D90s and then a D300. And when I made the jump to the full frame, you know, I was like, I'm going to take these awesome pictures and get up in this awesome helicopter. I didn't know how many times I was going to get that opportunity, so I wanted to make the best of it. Um, so I went and I rented, um, you know, I came to Adorama or, um, or, you know, one of the rental companies, I'm not even sure, but rented, you know, this awesome camera. And, you know, then you get up there and it was a, it was a night shot. And, and then you realize it's not like an iPhone where it lights up. You're up there and you don't know where any of the buttons are, and you forget how familiar you are with the camera that you're used to shooting. So, you know, really simple thing: don't shoot a new camera your first time. Um, or if you do, make sure you get the camera there two ahead of time. Go out, drive around in the car, take some pictures, take some stuff, shots of stuff moving. Um, you know, the differences are, you know, the thing that Tim was talking talking about on the Canon. I forget what they call it, but on 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 Nikon. You can have you can set it for a continuous focus, where it, it continues to focus as you you know shot the shot. So it's it's great for sports. Somebody's running at you, you can fire away and the camera continues to focus in, or you can get it to just lock in and and, and shoot. You know you got to remember everything in everything from a helicopter pretty much, uh, unless you're trying to shoot you know like those shots that we had at the beginning where it's 
you know, I'm trying to take a picture of somebody taking a picture out of the helicopter. You know, we call it behind the scenes, but um, if you're taking this shot or this shot or this shot, everything's at infinity already. So really, you know, if you're shooting a long lens, most of the new lenses have the ability so the lens doesn't have to hunt all the way through the focus range. You can set it on long focus only. You know, it'll hunt that last little bit to infinity and back, saves, saves the lens some time, makes more of your shots in focus. Um, I, I think it's one of the easier components one, of, of taking the picture once you get that dialed in. So, um, no big deal. But I, again, that burst mode's great because you know sometimes there's something in the edge of a photo that creeps in or creeps out. Sometimes, um, you know, sometimes you just miss the shot. You know, if you're trying to line something up the right way and you want it, you know, you want it perfect. So ha having those bursts are great. Cards are the point now. It's not like you know we had a guy up a week or two ago that was shooting infrared film. Right? I mean, the guy's got three cameras, three rolls of film. Infrared, you can't load in daylight. You have to load the film in complete darkness and unload it in complete darkness. Not even with like a red light. It's not even like black and white film like it's in the past. You know, this guy's got 90 pictures he can take. You know, or you know, 104 pictures. That's it. And and he went up and he ripped through all the film really, you know, pretty quick. Um, we have a luxury now. You know, with uh, you know, e even with the newer cameras, Tim, Tim's Canon shoots 50 megs. My 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 D800 is a 36 megapixel file. So. You know, even even with those big file sizes now and a 32 meg card, I can take three to four hundred shots before I run out of space. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with shooting three or four or five shots in a burst. Um, you know, some people, you know, we see that come back have, you know, they go on a 20 minute flight and they've got two cards burnt. It's a thousand photographs. You're like, all right, you know, they took pictures of two different things and took 200 pictures from the same angle. So, it, it's it's worth being a little restrained and and concentrating on the composition but you know at the same time take a few shots you, you never know what's going to creep in or um, will be in the way or not but not be in the picture the way you want it um, so I'm going to flip through I'm, I think we got a little bit behind here I want to just catch up a little bit um, this was shot um, uh, also taken by Taylor Mason it's it's a shot of yoga in Central Park I don't remember what the construct Times was Square. That's been at, Times Square right? <laughs> it's not, obviously not Central Park um, what do you remember the, the, the point of the yoga? It was, it was a the lemon. The the yeah, they sponsored that, and it was a thousand people doing yoga in, in Times Square. That's a thousand. Yeah, I mean, that's what they said it was going to be. I don't have the photograph, but we did. There. We did a thing for a different group of people this year. In San, it was in Central Park. It was ten thousand people doing yoga. That was also Lululemon. That was Lululemon yeah. too. Yeah. Lululemon. Oh, Lululemon. 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 Yeah. Very similar. Yeah. Uh, not according to that. <laughs> um, this is the West Side Hudson Yards. Um, this picture was taken. You know, I mean, I, again, we, we we do different things. This was an event sponsored by Lululemon. Um, it's for a charity to raise money for awareness. This was a pure real estate job. The people that are are redeveloping the West Side over here. Um, you know, they want some shots. This this vista is going to look dramatically different. It already kind of does, you know, and in, in, in the frame right here, this building's already like, you know, 50 stories high. Um, this whole area here is going to be covered by other buildings. The whole west side there is going to look totally different. So what they wanted was, um, you know, and it's part of what we do. We went out, we took some pictures like this. They have a virtual reality company, you know, a CGI firm that's going to build using computer graphics, um, build their their new skyline in here so they can show everybody what it looks like. So uh, sometimes you do a little bit of that too. Sometimes we're just shooting stock images, um, you know, either for our own social media awareness, uh, you know, or to, you know, to put on Shutterstock or, or one of the, the similar companies so somebody might need this view of, of that, that little spot in Central Park. Lexi, you took this shot, right? Isn't that yours? This was for an event, Paint the Town Red. Um, no, this was the Rangers. When the Rangers were in the playoffs this year, um, you know, New York got got everything a little crazy with the red and uh, the blue and white on Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden is one of the harder landmarks to take a nice picture of in New York. You know, especially at night. How do you take good pictures at night? And that's 
very hard from a moving helicopter. Nice order. Um, I'm going to show you uh, a picture, some pictures at the end where, where we went up a little bit higher altitude. And um, if you're familiar with the concept of just, you know, if anybody that's done any studio, anybody done any studio work, um, you know, when you, you know, you, you find out that it's it's reciprocal. I mean, it's, it's a square root function. The further you get away from something, the light just falls off immediately. So everybody thinks of when you, when you think New York City bright lights, you think of Times Square, and yeah, it's incredibly bright. Um, so is the area around the, the garden here. But you know, when you get up to a couple thousand feet over the city, you find that you're in blackness. You can't see anything in the helicopter other than the lights on the you know in the cockpit. Um, when you look down, most of the city looks black. The outer boroughs look look very dark. The water's black, and and as you take those pictures, you find that you know it's it's very difficult to capture any any level of detail in these bright areas and maintain any level of detail in these dark areas. So um, you know what you've really got to do is is sort of um, Personally, I underexpose everything a little bit, knowing that I can, you know, with the, with the new technology, I can bring out a little bit more detail than than I used to be able to. Um, you know, the lights are going to be there anyway, so I don't have to worry about that. You know, you boost the speed as much as you can with the equipment that you've got. You know, on my Nikon, I'll shoot 3200 as an ISO, but I'm more comfortable with it at 1600. Anything beyond 1600, you start really getting a lot of noise. You know. Personally, I'm looking forward to the next generation of sensor. You know, I mean, I keep saying I'm a Nikon guy and I love Nikon and who on Canon and, and the Canon guys are doing the opposite. But um, if they come out with a camera that'll give me a crisp image at 6400, I'm all over it. You know, I really don't care who it is. That, that's, I think, the next big leap. You know, they're doing this megapixel war. There's a, Canon has a 250 meg sensor out there now. Um, this computer's already choked with files from you know my 36 megapixel sensor so um, I, I don't think that needs to be the back you know the next big thing um, I'd be really happy if I could shoot at 6400 and get usable not that noisy images so um, the short answer to Tim's question is crank up the ISO as far as you can get it up without without creating really messy files um, and then you know get them into Lightroom bring the highlights down so you can maintain you know get some detail in here and then you know, bring the shadows up so you can try to get a little something out of here. Um, but it's hard, you know, I mean, e e these pictures, one of the functions of taking those highlights out is it really oversaturates everything in the colors. So you see here, I didn't, I didn't intentionally oversaturate these, these colors, although I'll cop to it, I'm known to do that. Um, you know, this is just what can slow the camera down. You know, if you can get it down to, I mean, if you can shoot at a 60th of a second out of a helicopter in the dark and get get a, a file that's not blurry, then you're really steady at it. You know, I mean, it's it's crazy. So um, we've got a gyroscope that we use sometimes. Kenyon Labs makes um, makes this equipment. It's it's a it's a pod about that big that mounts onto the base of the camera using a plate, you know, like a tripod or like an Arca Swiss plate. Um, you know, I don't know what the RPMs, but it's, it, it spins four different gyroscopes inside this unit. Um, on the different axes and, and creates a completely stable platform. It doesn't want to turn or move at all. Um, it's a fairly expensive piece of equipment, but I, you know, when you do this for a living, you see a lot of the guys that, that only shoot aerials have them on all the time. I only use it at night, um, but it definitely steadies the camera. I think it's worth two to three stops. So you know, if it's a difference between being able to shoot at 1600 and get usable images, and having to shoot at 60, at 6400 and getting a mess, um, you know, then it's great. Um, personally, I can't shoot any faster than a hundredth of a second, or I just get blurry stuff all the time. Um, the, the longer the lens, the blurrier. You know, I mean, it's the same, the same in helicopter as it is on the ground. The longer the lens, the faster you got to shoot to get a usable image. Um, little tip: the the burst mode there. It helps if you if you look at a slow motion. And it was a video I saw, I think, on F stoppers. If you look at a video, a high speed video of somebody shooting, you know, you're never perfectly still unless you're on a tripod on the ground. But you know, you're moving back and forth really. You know, even if you think you're jittery, it, it, you know, the lens is moving back and forth. 
at, at a certain point in that process, it stops and goes the other way. So if you shoot five quick images and just fire through it, um, the, one of them might catch that edge where the camera's really not moving. And you know, what, what I notice, if I take five of this shot, one of them's great, one of them's always way better than the other four. It's never two of them. Um, if I just try to shoot one, no matter how steady I get, it's a mess. You know, so I just shoot four or five. You know, in the dark, I just try to shoot them. And you know, you have to get a little bit lucky. Um, some people are better better at it than others. I'm not the steadiest, uh, but I'm not the worst either. So, um, gives you an idea. Another big thing is don't lean against the helicopter. The whole thing's shaking. All right. That's this thousand pieces. You need some to get you on top of that. There you go. Um, on the equipment, you know, if if I knew how to zoom in more, um, I would show you this this shot, and you know, and I'll and I'll post it later on Facebook. But um, this was Governor's Ball on Randall's Island. Um, we were at like a thousand feet. I was shooting with uh, a lens I rented. It was a Nikon 200-400 f/4. Um, it zoomed all the way out. You know, once in a while it makes sense to to get out of your comfort zone. The thing weighs like 12 pounds. It's impossible to shoot. Um, you can't line anything up at all because out of a helicopter, the whole thing is constantly moving. But you know, again, you put it in burst mode. You get you get what you want in the middle of the frame, and you fire away. Um, you know, what I was aiming at here was to fill the frame with people and not have any any dead spots, and it was pretty close. So. Um, What's cool is I would say 25% of those people are looking up at the helicopter. Some of them are waving, some of them are making faces. Um, you know, with that lens, and, and we shot with the Canon version of that lens as well. They're super, super crisp, and you can see what you, you know. You can see the expression on people's faces. You can recognize them. You can read the T-shirts. You can see what shoes they're wearing. You can see what they're drinking or smoking or whatever they might be doing. Um, we were hoping for some really good surprises in there. There's nothing too crazy, but um, but it's cool to kind of go through, you know, kind of grid, through, search through the photograph and see what everybody's doing. So um, there's some funny expressions in there. Um, another look down at Central Park. Uh, Central, I keep saying Central Park. Times Square again. Um, this was that night that we shot the, the the light the town red thing. This was uh, for AIDS awareness. Uh, it was the AIDS walk and. You know, there's a lot more red in a lot of the areas in, in New York that night than, uh, you know, like that that other shot you saw before, the ESB was, was red that night as well. Uh, I think there were 40 or 50 buildings that did something, right, the Time Warner Center. There were some big ones, it was pretty cool. Um, Tony Granada, I think, shot that, right? Um, guy that works with us, Tony Granada, big air-to-air -air photographer. Tony's pretty famous. He shoots a lot of uh, planes for all kinds of entities, um, helicopters, planes, old war, warbird planes, new planes, jets. He's been in pretty much every kind of aircraft you can think of shooting out of it at another aircraft. So um, obviously Coney Island. Um, you know, we've got kind of a good group of people that come out somewhat regularly. This, this shot was taken by a guy named Tobias Hotzer. He's a German photographer. He's based here in New York. Um, it's a very, very big pool in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Um, Tobias did a project with us where he shot all four seasons. So in the summer, there were some pools and some straight downs, some look downs on some beaches. Um, you know, in the fall, it was some foliage and some parks and people doing stuff. In the winter, some cool ice skating rink shots. Um, you know, he's very German. He's very geometrical. There's a lot of lines and um, a lot of cool order in it, skate parks, things like that. So. Um, he also shot that beach shot. So that was Coney Island as well, I think. Right? Um, this is back to Tony Granada having to taken that shot. You can see, you know, the different styles. Um, you know, again, effect-wise, everybody's got something a little different. Tobias likes, um, you know, kind of muting the colors. Um, Tony likes shooting them as they are. You know, a little bit more saturated on summer days. If you underexpose everything a little bit. It, Tends to look that way. Um, I shot this. You know, I always go. I never even realized it until I started doing this a little bit more. But um, I tend towards the dark. Everything's always a little bit more underexposed when I look at it a third, fourth time than than I thought initially. Um, it's another group of people on Randall's Island. 
Um, I'm getting into summer here, obviously, so 4th of July. Uh, Tony Granada shot that 4th of July, not this year, last year. And, um, you know, it's from over Weehawken or Hoboken, New Jer Jersey City, probably. Looking over, um, it was a different series of shots this year. I'll show you some other ones in a minute, but this, this was stuff over the, you know, the Hudson River. Um, this year it was over the East River, so you get a little bit of something different. A um, little bit different aspect ratio, but, you know, funny story, Tim and I went up to shoot this shot. It was a cover for the thousandth issue of Time Out New York. And, you know, and they ran it with, they, you know, they, well, you know, turn it up that way. Um, what was, what was the, what did it say in the, to, what's that? Roof there it is. That was the, yeah, roof there it is. So it was a, it was a cover. Um, we went up and it was early. It was like really early in the year. It was like early May. It was like a 50 degree, 55 degree day out. It was really nice out, but you know, they wanted this rooftop issue and, and we were like, all right, I don't know what you're gonna shoot on a rooftop, but we figured like, cool. They wanted pools on roof. They wanted rooftops. They had a vision though of this, but it was like May 10th and there were no pools open. And, and we were calling around, calling hotels, being like, is your pool open? And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. all of them, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they wanted the Gansevoort Hotel. So we called the Gansevoort. I spoke to the lady at the Gansevoort. I got the, the, the uh, hospitality manager at the Gansevoort. And she was like, pools open, bikinis, palm trees, umbrellas, lawn furniture, pool. It's going to be awesome. I'm like, tomorrow. She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're all set. It's, it's rocking up there. And um, we got up there, and um, you know, one of the things with aerial photography, you know, you might want to think about, and, and it's probably any photography, but you know, you definitely want to have a backup plan. Um, any, anybody see Caddyshack, the scene where they emptied the pool and they were cleaning it out? Like we got up there, and there were two guys in like hazmat suits brushing the bottom of the pool, and there was no water in it, and there was no bikinis, and there was no palm trees, and there were no drinks, and there's nothing over the Gans of work. Um, I, I didn't even see it. Tim was like, it's right there. I was like, where? He was like, right under us, right? At one o'clock. Yeah. So there was nothing in the pool. Um, we had a backup plan. This was only a couple blocks away. We zoomed over, took this shot. Um, fortunately, they were pretty psyched with it and, and it, it did run as a cover. So sometimes you gotta have a, a plan B. Uh, so this was over I mean, I guess we're just over the harbor there, sort of east of Governor's Island, kind of creeping towards Brooklyn fireworks this year. Um, there was a lot of traffic up there that night. It's, it's way darker than it really looks. You know, again, the equipment's good. You know, I mean, you, you're getting to the point now where you can take pictures at night and, and really pull a lot out of them. Um, I, I felt like when we hit the, I was a little upset when we hit the ground that night. I didn't think I really got anything good. And there, there were some cool pictures that came out of it, so. Um, you know, it's pretty exciting. Fireworks, you know, if if day is easy and night is hard, fireworks, it just compounds the effort, you know, because if you shoot at a hundredth of a second, they don't really look like fireworks, so you gotta slow it down. Um, I don't have much to say except just hold it steady as you can and fire away, because that's, that's how you're gonna get some of these light trails on fireworks. Um, you don't have the benefit of a tripod. You know, definitely use the, the gyro, you know, if we could. Um, still in summer here. Um, I look down on the beach. You know, I'm, I, I didn't take this picture. I think Natalie took this picture. Um, if any of you guys are big, uh, you know, Instagrammers, Instagram followers, if you follow us, um, Natalie's Miss Hatton. She shoots for us. Um, Lexi, by the way, is a chemist. He'll explain how to spell it, but he's a chemist. Uh, never us. Natalie took this picture. Uh, do you know what beach that's over? I don't know. But, could be any beach, yeah. Um, it doesn't look like a Coney Island kind of beach. I don't know, it could be though. Um, but I like it a lot, I, that's why I threw it in here. You can see it's square already. Um, you know, a lot's changing in photography, you know I mean? Some of the, we've got some people, uh, this guy Jason Peterson, um, he's really well renowned in, on, on social media circles. Um, he's taking some pictures for us. He's in the advertising world as well. He's big cheese in that regard. And he takes these awesome black and white pictures. He leaves a little bit of the photograph colorized sometimes, but 
Um, it's really stark, it's high contrast, it's striking stuff. Most of it's around New York. And, you know, what I found amazing was he shoots nearly all of it with iPhones and Leicas and, you know, it's very little DSLR photography. So, you know, again, the equipment's moving forward really fast. Um, shot that at the end of that 4th of July shoot of uh, Statue of Liberty. You know, again, I don't know. I mean, I, I find the statue hard to shoot. You got that great shot of it early on with the 300. Well, night, it's, it's very washed out. Color out of there. I don't even mean that. It's really like I, I find a lot of it. Just I, I look at the picture and it's not as dramatic as what I saw, you know. But you got to get up and fly around it a few times to check it out. It's cool. Um, but with fireworks, it's it's you know it's hard to get the good shot, but when you get the shot, it it, it works pretty nicely. Um, There's another shot by Lexi, right? Um, cool lines like that beat shot. You know, it's you know. My eyes drawn to the geometry of, of, of shots like this. Um, Lex, were you moving west east or north south? I and mean, were you going up Central Park West or? Uh, yeah, we're going from east to west. And I was on the right side, about very next to them. Like you said, you go into first mode and you straight right away. So I knew I wanted to be 50. Um, yeah. And it only lasted for a split second. Alright. So, same thing, you know, light it up, get the picture you want. Um, this was back on, on the week of September 11th. You know, we wanted to, I don't know, we wanted to pay tribute to um, the memory of the people lost in 9-11. Obviously, the, you know, the 9-11 Foundation and, you know, the lights, you know, were there. It, it makes for a memorable moment. We've seen it for a number of years now. And, um, I don't know, I mean, we, we got up there, it was kind of moving. And, we took a bunch of pictures. We, we you know, we put them out. Um, we donated some money to, um, you know, to a 9/11 charity. But, you know, I look back at it. I, I think it's just an important shot to have as part of the, um, you know, part of the presentation. There's, there's nothing really that remarkable about it other than it was a cool night, and it's important to get a lot of the stuff that, you know, that people find so memorable in New York documented. Um, you know, with that, we move into fall, autumn. Uh, I, I took this shot last last fall. Um, we went up. Who else was on that shoot? You know? Tim flew it. I I was in the back. Was on. Were you there? Was that our first flight together? Oh my god. Um, the the colors. You know, I mean, it, it's a gamble. You look at Central Park. You look at Prospect Park. Right now, everything's kind of firing. Um, last year, fall was really late. This year, it's early in terms of you know the foliage and leaves changing. Um, we tried to time it. We probably could have gotten a little better. There's still a good bit of green in there, but you know we did get some nice shots. I thought the um, the yellow truck when I took it, I thought it was a taxi. Um, it's actually just a yellow like pickup truck from a painting company or something. When you zoom in, it's, it's got one of those racks and some ladders and all that kind of thing. Um, there's a cool like shadow from a cloud pushing some, some light across that photo that, that I really like. Um, the one thing that bummed me that I did tweak was um, uh, this line here with the river was, um, it kind of went in like this a little bit, so I, 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 I cheated it out. You know, what are you gonna do? Gotta make some stuff happen, you know? Um, a few minutes later, we were going south. Um, again, this is, you know, another similar shot like we were talking about getting getting it lined up. You know, I knew we were going to cross over the bridge. I knew it would make a cool shot. I've got some shots from north of the bridge that look nice, but, you know, I wanted this thing, to, you know, really geometrical and symmetrical and, um, you know, perfectly balanced and, you know, just firing away. I pretty much got it. If, if you really, you know, look at it long enough, it starts to look a little skewed in one direction, but, um, you know, so it's one of the other fall shoots we did were um, we're gathering content. We're going to go up on Friday and shoot some some fall, winter, holiday prep. You know, Rockefeller Center. They've got the tree up. You know, that's coming. It's always a favorite. People coming up. You know, you definitely if you're thinking about going up. You know, book a holiday shoot. Get up over uh, Rockefeller Center. It's pretty cool. Um, going back. You know, we you know we mentioned earlier we've got some other cities we're expanding to. This was a shot over Miami. Um, we got an idea in our head a while back. Uh, there's some photographers right now 
releasing books. There's been some media recently. Some, some guys that shot some high altitude stuff. Uh, Vincent Lafare, George Steinmetz. Um, you know, some cool guys that are talented and they've gone up pretty high. We wanted to make sure that we got up and got some shots. Um, you know, and did that too. Uh, this one's 7,500 feet. It's over Miami. You know, the cool story there is it's a much smaller helicopter than Tim flies. So it's just me and the pilot, and we're kind of like elbow to elbow and kind of leaning out like this. And, um, it, you know, it was getting dark. It, just, it, it, it got pretty cool. I mean, we're, that's Miami International in the background. Um, we were high up enough that there were planes flying directly beneath us on approach. We were talking to, you know, American Airlines and, um, you know, other other airlines and big jets land, and it was it was really a great experience. So, um, if you want to go up in another city, we you know we're expanding, you know, rapidly, and there's there's some good stuff in store. Um, Key Biscayne is, is right near Miami. There was a tennis match going on. Uh, Serena, they're not on the court when I took the picture, but uh, it was a Serena Williams match, so um, that's going on there. That's pretty cool. When we did the high altitude thing, we went up over New York first. Um, Tim will give you an idea why helicopter pilots don't want to go up that high, but um, most of them don't like it. So we actually had to talk. To the ground. We had to talk a couple people into it. Um, you know, it's not a safety issue. I think it's just you know you go up and um, it's cold, right? I mean, this was in January of this year, so it was like 30 degrees when we took off, like nine up there. It's again set between seven and seven thousand five hundred feet. Um, I guess we're over Queens probably in that shot. Um, this one we're over uptown, you know, and you know, looking south, you can see Central Park and downtown there. Um, but it gives New York a whole different quantity, you know, quality. You can see the, um, you know, the, the blue, which are definitely dialed up a little bit in the picture, but you know, the, the lights that you see now that are getting built out, the, the LEDs, definitely have like a bluer light to them. And the old sodium lights that you see in neighborhoods like the Lower East Side, you know, over here in Brooklyn, uh, Hudson County over here, and even, you know, surprisingly the Upper East Side, um, you know, they haven't ripped a lot of those old sodium lamps out. So you have, you have like a warmer orangey light. Um, you know, from space it looks even cooler, but we can only do what we can do, you know? <laughs> There's a picture that NASA guy took though recently that was on uh, Facebook. You can see this, but it's from you know, 30 miles, 50 miles up, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and then sometimes we just go the other way. Rather than going high, we go low. We take some industrial stuff. Um, you know, we're over in Hudson County and Kearney. There's a lot of a lot of cool, um, you know, industrial things going on. So that that gives you an idea of, of what it is we do. Um, it's just so much to shoot. There's the city, the building, obviously, that you can. I think the dry docks are really cool. Uh, you can see boats on the river. There's just so much to see when you go around here. Yeah. Uh, and New York on Air was created to share that with, uh, with you all. So uh, please come fly with us and experience it for yourself and take some killer shots. Because uh, I guarantee you, you'll get something you love. Cool. Now you guys got to have some questions. Yeah. Sometimes, do you use uh, the image stabilization? No. 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 Um, we, you know what? It's, it's probably worth experimenting with a little bit, but um, th that was a question that we had immediately. As soon as we put the gyro on there, you're like, no, what do I do with this? Um, the people at Canyon Labs said to turn it off. Okay, so, but if you're not using the gyroscope, yes. Yes. Anything to help your uh, yeah. the shape. And, and also, uh, are you strapped? 100%. And the camera itself? Am I personally strapped? Yeah. Yeah, I, w I wear a utility harness like you saw. Um, so you're strapped uh, to the helicopter, your camera's strapped to the harness. Everything's strapped. We cannot afford to have anything. No hats, no glasses, It's nothing can fall out. So you watch your lenses, you bring two bodies? Yes, two right. bodies. So what we'll do is, um, you know, the cameras, we, we make sure your camera's got a strap on it. We use carabiners. Um, and we strap your camera to your harness. Um, it's and you know it's even more redundant than that. You can see this this iPhone case um, that I have. I mean, you know, we use these. We sell them. We use them. The phone just pops in. 
but it's got a little loop here, and, and we made some with um, permanently safety wired and a little carabiner. So, you know, if you do want to go up, I mean, like Tim said, we can't afford to have anything go wrong, so we make sure it's flawless. Um, you can't drop it. You know, you let it go, you just let it dangle, whatever. You do the same thing. Bring two camera bodies and an iPhone, no problem. Everything's strapped in. Um, with the gyroscope, I mean, even that's a, a five, six, seven pound hunk of metal. Um, you know, I, I strap the camera in and I strap the gyro in. Even though they're attached with that Arca plate, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's dark, maybe I undo it accidentally. I don't want any disasters, so, you know, so we make sure of that. What else we got? Uh, when, it, when you book a flight, um, how how is it determined where you're gonna go? I know uh, I know that there's the popular attractions like the Empire State Building, the World Trade Center, but I also saw some shots of Coney Island um, and other parts of. You've worked, the you've worked that with your group because you may want to go see the Empire State Building want to spend your entire flight there. Someone else may want to go see the, the, the statue, for example. So it's. The beauty of what we're doing is that it's 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 a it's a customizable product where you in the group decide where you want to go, um, and there's plenty of time, in, especially in the 30 minute to go see everything. In our 20, in our 12 minute flight, it's pretty much it, a, uh, either to the Empire State Building or to uh, to like that, the money shot we have of downtown. So it's it's something that's it's collaborative with the group. Are there any limits? Like, is there? certain point that you can't pass? Like if you wanted to fly over like Yankee Stadium or something, you'd be able to pass. It's, it's about the time, really, and how far away. You know, if you've got a 30 minute flight, you can only do, you know, fly for 30 minutes, and it requires us to come back to, to the base. But uh, Yankee Stadium's in play. Um, if that's what, you're, that's what your group wants to see, uh, that's, that's definitely a possibility. If you look at it, Yankee Stadium's pretty, actually well south of the GW Bridge. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's definitely important. Thank you. You had uh, one of the night shots, uh, I think it was like Times Square, and it seemed kind of low, but it was like super crisp. I just wanted to know, like, does the ambient lighting affect, like, you know, how fast you can shoot? Or at that altitude, does it really not matter? Um, ambient light certainly helps. Yeah, when you're... Nine square is a lot easier to shoot at, at night than and lower too. than a lot of other stuff. Um, you know, we can only get so low. That it's 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 a limiter. Um, first of all, there's rules, and you know, and they're there for um, yeah, they're there for safety reasons. Um, you know, but also there's other buildings. You know, I mean, you know, if, if you're flying over Kearney, New Jersey, there's not a lot of stuff that's taller than 150 feet other than a couple water towers and some bridges and stuff, but, you know, when you get... Where did that shot go? There it is. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, when... You know, when you're over Times Square, there's some pretty big buildings there. Um, so, yeah, it, it's pretty crisp. Um, but I bet it wasn't shot faster than 125th of a second. You know, and it's definitely 1600, because when I, when I go up at night, that's, that's where I start. So every, every time I've tried to mess around with it lower than that, I end up with just dark, unusable pictures. So. For those of you considering coming up the fly list, uh, I suggest your first flight be during the day because you don't want to go up at night and spend you know, spend your hard-earned money and, and get a lot of blurry stuff. So, uh, because you're, you're not just fighting the camera uh, to shoot at night, you've got to fight the wind and the vibration and all those other aspects that uh, make the aerial photography challenging. It's going to be windy. Quite. It does get pretty windy. I'm curious about the security clearance and prevents all questions. There are, uh, so there's, there's not really security uh, limitations. Uh, we have our own federal regulations as far as how close we can fly to buildings and, and altitude restrictions and all that, but as far as uh, Security-wise, the only time we have a problem with security is when uh, a president comes to town or any of the dignitaries, uh, where he shuts down the airspace. You get no, uh, you can't do anything. Or the UN's in town, uh, yeah. those kind of things. But flying around the buildings, 
We like to be, obviously we fly uh, within what we're allowed to fly regulatory, regulatory anymore. But uh, with your camera lenses and the technology, you can get, you can make stuff look close, a lot closer than, than what you are. And a lot of, a lot of these shots were 2,000 feet, which is plenty, you know, it's uh, plenty of room. Yep. Is that thing kicking out of you? You know, that being said, um, I can't believe I have to answer this question. Tim, um, as a pilot, is constantly in communication with, you know, when we take off in Kearney, we're in communication with Newark Airport because we're essentially in their domain. When, when when you cross over to the East River, you're in LaGuardia's domain. When you're over the city, you know, I mean, you're constantly con communicating with either the airports or the NYPD or, you know, like you said, it's not so much a security issue. They know who we are. We're up almost every day. You know, they know the helicopter. There's, there's all kinds of technology transponders, and you know, they know where all the aircraft are. So, you know, from a safety standpoint, they want to make sure the biggest security thing is making sure that nobody's going anywhere that they don't know. Not, not because they don't want you seeing something over Times Square. They just don't need a plane flying over at the same time that helicopters hovering there and, and an accident. So, you know, they try to keep, uh, and they do keep a nice tight watch on all that. But again, the key is, like like a lot of things, just communicating. Yes, you got all that right. Did I get that? 100%. I thought that's where you were going to go. You'd be great. Thanks, man. What else? Uh, so, um, I, I like the idea of shooting at night, but in the day, is there like a best Time is it, is it noon when, when the sun is going up the avenues? Is it morning when the shadows are long? And that, that's a broad question. There are different things to get things, but for someone who's only going to go up once. It's not noon. Um, it's not noon. I don't think. I mean, you know, it, it depends. I mean, if, if what you're looking for is people laying on a beach, no shadows, or people laying in the park, you don't want any shadows, noon's great because the sun's straight down. Um, Personally, I, I like the, you know, the, I don't magic know, the, the added emotion that comes with different light, right? So, what is the magic hour? Hour right before sunset or right after sunrise. What you get um, is just a much warmer light. You know, and the color temperature of the sunlight is warmer. So, you know, picture the, the portrait of somebody like sitting out on the porch and the sun and the hair and the, that golden glow from the sun, the low light. And you get a lot of shadows because the sun's low in the sky, so um, you get buildings throwing shadows across stuff. And Another question: Do you, do you have to have a full flight to go on, or would you go up with one person? Typically, we won't, um, just because it's not really economical, economical so which, is, which is why we, why we, you know, crowdsource the, the thing in the first place. The minimum would be three, uh, but we would certainly try to find a four to go on on that flight. But four is plenty of No, we work all that for you. You just sign up and, and we'll make it happen for you. Uh, if the question more importantly would be where what you want to see. That's what you gotta work out with your your your, uh, your flight mates. If you go on um, that website and put your information in, you'll be logged in, you'll get our newsletter, all that. You can put your credit card in, you can book a flight. Um, Kate will call you, find out when you, or, or email you, find out when you want to fly, are you looking to fly in a weekend, are you looking to fly now, are you waiting until the spring, whatever you want. And, and we'll work that part of it out. And then, you know, if you want to say, look, I work during the week, I can only do it on Saturday or Sunday, and I want to fly at magic hour, you know, that's great. You're not the only one. You're not going to be the only one. Maybe, maybe that makes you have to wait a little longer, a few weeks, months, whatever, I don't know. But. You know, it, we'll, we'll, we'll build it together. And when when this gentleman here and this young lady here sign up as well, right? all of a sudden there's three people, you're gonna get a call like, hey, it's game on, and and there'll, there'll be a flight. And you know, we'll try to find a fourth. I've been on your website, I've talked to friends about doing this with me, yep. and I was just returning equipment here, and it just happened to be that you're here. So yeah. The easiest thing is if you do have friends that wanna go up as well, it does simplify it a little bit if, if you call us up and say, hey, I already got a group, you know? We try, uh, from, from our experiences for 
and I don't want to imply that anyone's a novice here, but it's very challenging to shoot at night. And so we don't want our you guys to come back and say, man, I didn't get anything. It's all blurry. <laughs> so we prefer, you know, but if you want to arrange a night flight, we can we can make that happen. Uh, we're more than happy to uh, to accommodate uh, if you really want we to. Do get re we do get that request. So, you know, if we have a few people that want to go up at night, you know, we'll put a few people together and we'll go up and do it. I don't know what you before. Oh, okay. Sunset was found, so I could imagine. Like, like, I did get some point where the light just changed. I'll tell you, night is cool. Oh, it's a good idea. You can kill it's that. Cool. It's cool. Awesome. It is really cool. What do you got? Nothing? All right. Yes, sir. We can fly low over the rivers, uh, but over the buildings we tend to be, uh, it has to be at least 500 feet below, above uh, the building that you're within, within the radius so, uh, so most, most of the time over, over midtown, we're between 1,700 and 2,000 feet. That sounds like a lot, but the Empire State Building is, how tall is it? It's 1,300 feet? I mean, you're right there. Yeah. Like you could tell in this picture that, you know, the statue, I mean, the statue's only 200 feet high. I mean, we're barely, I don't even know if we're higher than the statue here. Um, you know, but here we're over Columbus Circle and, you know, it's a whole different game. Um, just trying to think of some of the, it's gotta be one more. And again, the beauty of it is if you wanted to go shoot low altitude stuff, uh, we're limited on the rivers, but if you want to get your little group together uh, and if everyone's like, yeah, let's go do that. We can do that. It's not, this isn't sightseeing. This is a photo experience flight that we're doing. And so it's it's about you getting the shots that you want to get. So if you work it out with, you, with the rest of the helicopter, you know, we'll take you wherever you want to go when you're in the time. On that note, sightseeing is banned over in Manhattan, right? Not quite yet. Well, you're talking I, over Manhattan? Yeah. Yeah, they don't go, uh, they don't fly, they just do it over the river. Right. Uh, doors closed. Uh, we're, we're, we're a totally different animal. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, we'd like to thank everybody for being here, taking the time out of your day. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's awesome. You know, some of you have flown, some of you want to fly. Um, keep checking it out. Come and fly with us. You'll have a great time. We promise you that. Um, we definitely want to thank Adorama in a big way. Um, it's awesome to have us in the store. And, um, and to be a partner with them. Check out the video that they, they just made for us. It's pretty cool. Um, it's on their website. Um, what's the easiest way for them to find that? Uh, YouTube.com slash There you go. YouTube.com slash Adorama TV. Uh, come on up and grab a, a card or two for a 10% discount off the flight. And I'd love uh, to see you out there. Yeah, thanks again. Thank you. Yep.